So we have another spooky term here, literal types. Ooh, what is this? Do I need a computer science degree? And no, you do not, because literal types are really simple. So literal types are exact values of strings and numbers. To quote the TypeScript handbook, both var and let allow for changing what is held inside the variable and const does not. So this is reflected in how TypeScript creates types for literals. So TypeScript has string, number and boolean literals. The boolean type itself is just an alias for the true or false union, which is really interesting when you think about it. So let's see what the literal type is. So for example, if you say let Pokemon general type Pikachu, you're probably expecting this to be a string and you would be right. If we hover over it, it's a string. But what is the literal version of this and how is this useful to us? So if we have Pokemon literal type and if we say Pikachu, because we're using const, it's unlikely that the value is going to change. So when we hover over it, instead of being a string, it's the literal representation of the string. So it's Pikachu. So how can this be helpful? This concept is more useful if we combine type literals with unions. So for example, we can create a function move Pokemon, and then we can specify an argument direction. We can say up, we can say right. So imagine this is some game. Then we can say left and the implementation can be whatever. So now we're gonna say move Pokemon, and then when we use auto completion, we get all these wonderful options. And so we can say up, and if we goof up, if we have Ritter, <laughs> right, it's going to complain at us, it's going to let us what we should use. So argument of type rit is not assignable to any of those things. So this is really awesome. So let's talk about another spooky sounding term, which is literal inference. So literal inferences and TypeScript things properties on an object might change. So instead of inferring a literal type, it infers a primitive type, exactly what we've seen before. So we can see how this looks in practice, right? Examples, examples. So we can say Pokemon, we're going to give it an argument name string, and then we can say Pokemon type. And of course you can turn this into a type alias or whatever you want. Let's just copy this over. And then let's give the function body. We can say console log name Pokemon type if we want. So let's create a Pokemon. So we can say Pokemon name Pikachu. And then we can say Pokemon type should be electric, so let me also just copy this over. And yeah, let me just do this. So now we have a Pokemon. So let's try adding a Pokemon and see what happens. So if I say add Pokemon, first one is going to be fine. So pay attention, the name is string, right? And you also expect this to be the string, right? So there isn't going to be any problem when we say Pokemon name. The only problem is that TypeScript expects another argument because if we make this optional, for example, it's going to work just fine. So here is the thing that we're talking about. So if I say Pokemon, Pokemon type, and this is an error and you're like, hmm, why is this an error? And this is some of the most uh, common problems you're going to encounter when you're starting to learn TypeScript. So argument of type string is not assignable to any of those parameters, which makes sense because the type string doesn't match the literal fire water or electric type, right? And if you look over the Pokemon here, we can see that name is a string and the Pokemon type is a string. So how do we solve this problem? So we have a couple of solutions as I show you here. So we can say that this is a literal type. So let me just copy this piece over. Then we can use type assertion again. We can say electric and this fixes it because when we hover over a Pokemon, the name is still a string, which is okay, but the Pokemon type is the literal value electric. But there's really better methods of doing it. So we can use the s const method, which is going to turn the entire object into a literal type. So we can see it turns it into this type, which is read only name Pikachu, read only Pokemon type electric, which is the literal type. So as I say here in the post, TypeScript adds a read only type on the Pokemon properties, the signals, they won't change. So TypeScript knows it's a literal type instead of a general type like string or number. So this signals to TypeScript, the values of Pokemon won't change. All right, so I hope you learned something and you saw how this wasn't spooky at all. So catch you in the next one.